Right now we're trying to define our vision. Hello everybody, this is Brock on the road. It's a beautiful, beautiful evening out here in the mountains. And I'm thinking about vision. We've been really praying, really seeking God about vision. You know, it's when you start to really clearly define your own vision, go back and renew your focus. You know, you get back into those deep parts of your heart saying, what is it that I know God wants me to do? And that's what Laura and I are doing now. Right now, what we understand in terms of vision is to serve Jesus Christ. That's what the Word of God says. But His Word says to preach his gospel and make disciples so really our vision is to do what the word of god says is to serve jesus christ through preaching his gospel teaching training coaching and leading his people by example so that the body of christ will grow into mature biblically whole sons of god that's our mission. That's our statement right there. Laura and I are humbling ourselves now. And boy, when you start to purify a vision, start to determine to obey the high calling of God on your life, do not be surprised when everything inside of you that's resisting comes to the surface. When the weakness of your flesh rises to the surface, the trying of your faith Begin. See, faith is the substance of the thing you're hoping for. Once you take that dream or the little bit of wishes that you have and you clarify it and you take that vision and write it down, when you make it plain, you start to design plans and ways to implement it into your life. When you start to put a date on it, when you start to put actionable items together, everything that can be of resistance in, the, in your flesh, okay, within the, the, in the enemy's camp around you, will come up because faith has to take action towards the thing that you're hoping for. And when you get that vision clearly defined, when you get the, the vision written down, when you get your aim really, really precise, intentional, and accurate, you will have resistance. And that's what we have found to be true in our own experience, in our own life. Let's pray. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I give you praise and glory and honor for being with us. Lord God, everyone right now, we join together as the body of Christ. We look at ourselves and we pray, we pray right now. Heavenly Father, search our hearts, O oh God. See every wicked way, every weakness of our flesh, every ounce of pride, every bit of conceit, every bit of sin, every weight that doth so easily beset us, everything, Lord. Search our heart, O oh God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we take this time to seek your face, Lord. We draw near to you. We ask that you would draw near to us. We ask, Father, that your Spirit would teach us all things and guide us into all truth. We're asking, Holy Ghost, that you would teach us how to love you more effectively and love our neighbor as ourself. We give you praise today, Lord God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We magnify you today. Lord, no matter what we have done, no matter where we've been, no matter what the failures are, no matter what it looks like in our past, there is no excuse, Lord God. There's nothing impossible with you. There's only impossibilities being built in our own minds, in our own flesh. The things of our flesh, the things of our unrenewed mind and our carnal mind, Lord God, right now, we pull them strongholds down. 
We cast every imagination down in the name of Jesus. Every high thing that has exalted itself against the knowledge of God, we, right now, in the name of Jesus, we bring it down. We declare over our life right now in Jesus' name that we are the head and not the tail. We're above only, not beneath. We thank you and we declare that we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We love our neighbor as ourself in Jesus' name. Thank you that we walk in the Spirit and do not fulfill the lust of our flesh. I thank you, Lord God, that you are with us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Thank you so much today, Lord, for speaking to us. I thank you for your goodness and mercy. And I thank you for your grace being with us. We come boldly before your grace right now, before your throne. We ask you, Lord God, to lead in God and direct our path. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, good evening. How's everybody doing out there? Y'all doing all right? How's everybody doing in California? How are you East Coast folks doing? <laughs> All of our Florida people, I think you guys are looking at your state a little differently now. It's funny because on the news, it looks like Florida's the best, most proactive and progressive state right now. But when you look into it, it's not looking good for those of us who believe contrary to the world system. All you Floridians, we love you, and I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would lead them and guide them. I pray you open their eyes and their ears. I pray you open doors that no man can close, only God can close, and open the doors that only God can open. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for favor with men and favor, Lord God, in everything they do. I thank you they will provide things honest in the sight of men and in the sight of God. Thank you, Lord, for being with your people in Jesus' name. Oh, God, we bless you. Everyone out there, I hope you're doing well. I hope every one of you are blessed today. I hope that with the things going on in your family, I pray that you take this time to really just stop all of the worry. Okay, don't be anxious in anything, okay? Just cast your care before the Lord. He cares for you. Look, you can't add anything to this day. Alright? You must, must, must seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, okay? And all these other things will be added unto you. Alright? Let's seek Him first, alright? Look, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything, in every single thing, okay? Let your request be made known unto God. All right. Let your request be made known unto him. Let the peace of God guard your heart. You should stay in his peace. Stay in his grace. Okay? Stay in his joy. Now, if you're lacking joy, then rejoice. Okay? I know I can hear from it just sounds like some of you guys need to rejoice. You know, sometimes you just need to refill yourself with joy. Don't get drunk with wine. Don't turn to wine. Look at these beautiful deer. Hey guys, y'all go ahead. Come on. Y'all gonna y'all just go ahead. Lord Jesus. Deer everywhere out here in the mountains. Yeah, they run in there. And then they come right back out sometimes. Like you give them the opportunity to cross, and then they act like they won't, and then they'll jump right in front of your car. <laughs> well, in the name of Jesus, they will not jump in front of my car. I thank you, Lord God. That's not my experience in Jesus' name. But anyways, guys, rejoy. And how do you rejoy? Here's the, the way to re-peace. I'm going to call it re-peace. To refill up and to get yielded into peace. To get into joy. You know, to re rejoice, to re-peace, and to re-love. This is how you do it. You magnify God. Because the New Testament, the Word of God says that God is love in 1 John. It says God is joy. It says God is peace. So to refill in his peace, to be refilled with his love and refilled with his joy, is to be refilled with him. 
the spirit of God inside of you. Don't be drunk with wine. Wherein is excess. Don't get into excess. You know, Netflix, all right, that's not your solution. Okay, going out and overeating in excess is not your solution, all right? Definitely not drinking alcohol in excess, going and smoking cigarettes in excess. And, you know, you getting into excess is not the answer. You need to be filled. There's only one thing, and that's or one person. That's the Spirit of God, okay? When you are refilled with the Spirit, peace, love, and joy are the manifestations that you can count on every single time you are filled. Okay, so that's how you sense his presence, his peace, his love, and his joy. So we magnify his name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory be to Jesus, the highest, the most high, almighty, holy God. Right? You could just go whatever. If you only know Jesus, then you could say, Jesus, I thank you, Jesus. I bless you, Jesus. It doesn't matter if you know all the names of God, all the Jehovah, you, whatever he is to you, start to magnify that, okay? So you can say, Jehovah, you are my provider. You're my peace. You're my healer. You're my banner. You are my all in all, my, the great I am. Everything I need, you are. You are all in all. You can say whatever you know, the great physician. He is glorious, holy, and mighty, and worthy. Start blessing his name. He is good, and his mercy endureth forever right you magnify him and that's how you rejoice now that's one part the other part is is casting your care before him just i mean literally saying lord i'm going through this how about the weakness of your flesh like the thing that so easily besets you knocks you off balance right the thing that so easily gets you off of your focus it could be sin it could be family it could be drama it could be whatever habit cast that care before him you know what you can't do it you can't fix it okay only god can the bible says in romans 8 that if if you live according to flesh you will die but if you through the spirit do mortify or put to death the deeds of your body you shall live so notice by the spirit you have you can only put to death the deeds of the body by the Spirit. So whether you feel like you're living holy, whether you feel like you're sanctified and or you're you've got your whole checklist together, whether or not you are living according to those measurements that you have set on yourself, whether or not you are, you know, giving yourself uh, an A plus in your grade or you're grading yourself with a B, C, D, or maybe you're getting giving yourself an F, maybe you're flunking. You know, maybe you're really failing right now. Whatever it is in your own mind, just know you and your own mind are not going to get you where you need to be. It is only in seeking God, drawing near to Him, all right, submitting therefore to God. That's how you resist the devil. That's how you put to death the deeds of your flesh. You submit to God. You seek Him. You magnify Him. Give Him thanks. You start casting these cares, these anxieties that are on your heart. That's how you do it. Whatever it is, you start to lay it down before God, knowing that coming to God, that is your solution. That is your answer. Period. There's no other way. So, it's like this. Seek Him. Okay? Seek Him. The Lord's Prayer says, Heavenly Father, you know, Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the number one thing is to magnify him, praise him, honor his name. In other words, seek him, bless him, enter his courts with thanksgiving, give him praise, right? And then humble yourself. Lordship, him being king is the the epitome of all of your seeking proper placement your place is on your knees humbling yourself submitting yourself every day and yielding to him that is the first and foremost I guess you could say um, priority of every day is submit yourself to him that's you offering up your body a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto him that's your reasonable 
service. So your service every day is offering your body, oh, there's another deer, a few more, offering your body a living sacrifice. Now sacrifice is killed, so you're a living, dead sacrifice. So you're offering your life, the discipline, the work, everything that you do is laid down and offered to him. More deer. Woo. And every night I see 20, 30 deer. It's amazing. So that's what you do, guys. Get before him. And that's the discipline of the Christian life. Is seeking him always. Submitting, yielding. And when you do that, you know, you're, sometimes your flesh thinks it's laborsome. Like it's dutiful. Sometimes you're mind and will get so stuck in on yourself and your selfishness and you being fleshly and carnal that you think it's, oh, I got to pray, man, I got to do this. But really, everything, spirit, soul, and body, everything in your life actually loves being in God's presence. Everything in you was created. Your body, mind, your soul, your emotions, every bit of you was designed to enjoy the pleasure of God's presence. So, it's a trick of your mind to not want to pray. It's a trick of Satan, all right, to do anything else other than seeking him and submitting to God. Satan's one goal is to trick you, to swear you away. There's more deer. That's his trick. That's his strategy. That's his devices. That's his weapons, okay? It's very simple. Keep you from submitting to God. If he can just keep you from submitting and then keep you from submitting and keep you from praying again, keep you from, he'll rob you of your joy because you'll get, you know, you'll get dirty. You'll get spotted from the world. You get lazy. You lose discipline. And next thing you know, you're looking and smelling and acting carnally, worldly, and fleshly. So everyone out there, thank you for sharing I can see that some of you, it seems that you are really going through some tough situations. I understand. It is a tough time right now. I know that things are getting to the point where it was, it's no longer the theory. It's no longer the futuristic ideas of where the world's going. We are seeing the implementations happen. Over the last year, we have seen legitly things happen one thing after another. It is time now to practice and exercise yourself in godliness. Okay, it is time to be serious about clarifying what God's will, His character, and what His nature is for each area of your life. It is time. There is no better time than now. As a matter of fact, the only time you ever have to do this is now. You push it off to tomorrow, well, you'll wake up tomorrow and it will be your now tomorrow. You know, your now is always now. You, can, you push it off until another time where you will be looking at, should I do this now? You either do it now or you do it now at another time. Either way, you will do it now because now faith is. Now is the day of salvation, the Bible says. You know, we won't get into that. Everyone out there, I hope you hear my heart. Okay, I'm just on the road going down to Atlanta. It's a beautiful evening here. The sun is going down. Driving through the mountain. I just saw about 20-something deer on the way up. The closer we get to the interstate, the less... <laughs> the less deer and animals we see but usually every night I'll see I'll see one or two foxes um, I see a whole lot of deer I'll use maybe see a coyote here and there raccoon rabbit all these different things I'll see but guys I just want to share my heart with all of you as I'm riding I would love to pray with you all uh, I just want you all to know that there are there's some challenging times coming and everyone out there be encouraged okay let me edify you and build you up okay nothing changes what the Word of God says about you nothing changes the fact 
that you are in Christ Jesus. Seriously, nothing changes in the Word. God's Word that He has said about you or what God has said about Jesus will not change. It will abide forever. And you are in Christ and everything He says abides forever. You can bank on it. It's clockwork. It's put in motion. It's like mechanical. What he said about you doesn't change. Now, your circumstances are temporary. Okay? Your family circumstance, the drama, the hurt that you feel right now is temporary. The anger, maybe. You and I both know that stuff is temporary. Your, every bit of your dreams, your, you know, that you have at nighttime, your imaginations in the day, all of the emotions in between, all of that is temporary. Okay? But his word truly endures forever. So if you want to get yourself stable in the midst of emotional days or an emotional time right now, here's what we can do. We get in the word. There's some amazing scriptures that all that never change. Greater is he that is in you or in me than he that is in the world. That never changes. Okay? How about, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So the things you need will be added unto you, but he says in sequence, seek first the kingdom of God. Paul said this, forget those things which are behind you and press onward, press forward toward the mark of the high calling of God, you know, the prize, press toward the future. Don't look back, forget everything behind you. Look in the future, get your vision, focus everything crystal clear and press toward that mark for the prize. The prize is the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That is, you are predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus. I'm telling you, Paul said it too in that same chapter when he said that. He said this, if you don't see it this way, then you're not mature yet. He says, you will one day. God will show you. He said this, you haven't apprehended yet. You haven't matured. You haven't apprehended the, the high calling yet. You have not been conformed fully into his image yet. And if you do not see it yet, that that is your calling on earth. Your high calling is to be like Jesus. If you do not see that yet, God will reveal that to you. If he hasn't revealed it to you or if you refuse yet to understand it or to grasp it, it's on you, not God. It is your high calling. It is your mission on the earth to be conformed in every area to be like Jesus. Ephesians 4 says it like this. You know, that's what the fivefold ministry is there to do. That's to train you, right? So that you would not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And he says that you would grow up into him, into Jesus in all things that you would be mature, that you would grow up, that you would not be tossed. He wants you to be solid. He wants you to be firm and unmovable. That is your high calling. That is your goal. That's it. All right? So number one, his word is true. Okay? His word is amazing. You can trust in his word forever, O oh Lord. That word is settled in heaven. His word is settled. Now, you got to set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Your life, okay, you died, and your life is hidden in Christ. Get hidden in Him. Get submitted. In other words, get everything buried. Submit yourself. You know, bring your body into submission. When you do that, you'll keep yourself from being a castaway. Okay, guys? That's really all I have in terms of encouragement. I know you guys are going through some tough stuff really tough things just know your warfare is invisible enemies 
It is not the carnal and it's not the outside. It's not the people. The people are doing the things to you. They are the one choosing by free will to do it. However, they're either being influenced by God or by Satan's kingdom, okay? Take everything to God in prayer. Cast your care before Him, okay? Lay your anxieties down. And focus on one thing every day. Submitting to God. Yielding to Him. Don't be filled with excesses of this carnal, all of your carnal ways of the world. Only be filled with His Spirit. So draw near to Him and He will draw near to you. Seek Him and He will be found when you search for Him with your whole heart. Alright? Enjoying the fellowship, the presence, the manifestation of the Spirit of God is how you, as a good manager and steward of your life, that's how you execute the work that needs to be done through your life on the earth. Every day, seek God and submit to Him and yield. And then do His will. When you yield to Him and you're praying, the Spirit of God works the angels, works all of the things in the background, making sure that the will of God that needs to be done in your life gets done. You just have to seek Him and yield. And when you're yielded, you work with the Holy Spirit. You may work with Him in prayer. He may have you praying for hours. You might just pray for five minutes. Either way, pray, get, get, get with Him and get submitted. Okay? And then from there, be led by the Spirit in prayer. Prayer with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. That's in English. That's in tongues. Okay? That's in intercession. That is all prayer. Okay? Praying in the Spirit. Building up your most holy faith. Keeping yourself in the love of God. Edifying your own self. Stirring up the gift of God that's in you. Right? Because God has not given you the spirit of fear. Right? It's of love, power, and of a sound mind. Of self-control. So strengthen yourself in the Lord. Get yielded and submitted to Him. That is the answer to all of your problems. It's always submitting to Him. Over and over and over and over. Because God gives grace to the humble. But you you actually are like, you repel His grace and His help and His mercy when you're getting pride and you get selfish when you get in the flesh. Right? But if you will humble yourself and submit to Him, the grace of God that's in you, the rivers of living water, flow out of you effortlessly. But when you get into pride, you clog up that all that life that's inside of you and he can't quicken your mortal body you're not allowing the life of God inside of you to bring life to all of the areas of your life it's not on God's part okay it's on our part we have to focus on one thing seeking God humbling ourselves and submitting to him and then doing his will you submit and do submit and do okay that's loving God and loving others. That is everything. Whatever you do in word or in deed, do it in the name of Jesus. Okay? As Christ has loved you, go love others. Do it as unto the Lord. Whatever you do the least of these, you've done it unto Him. So, submit and do. In other words, here, get into a place of submission and yieldedness to where you can hear what He's saying and you can be directed and be guided and led by the Spirit and then do okay what do you do well you take his word that applies that area when you trust him with all your heart and lean out into your own understanding and you've yielded to him and submitted because you're acknowledging him, acknowledging him in every area all right he will direct your path now whatever he directs you to do do it you see that's called submitting and then doing what he directs you now his word is clear on a lot of things if his word is clear already you don't need a special leading you just need to submit to Him and do what you know to do already. Okay? Do what you know to do. If the Word says to go and feed a poor person, if you see a poor person, and the opportunity for itself, feed them. You don't have to ask the Holy Ghost again, you know, do I feed this person? He, if you're listening to the Lord, He's gonna, you'll have Scripture come up in your mind that says feed the poor. He does not change His will. His character and will and nature is for you to feed the poor. 
okay? It's for you to help someone that's hurting, to be encouraging, to comfort, to edify, and to uh, exhort. So, when you see a need, meet the need. As you have, therefore, opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto those who are of the household of faith. Let us do good. Let us share. Let's give. Let's support one another, okay? Let's give everything that we can in terms of encouraging and being there for one another and helping everyone in need, praying for one another. Let's be the body, okay? Let's love one another. So submit to him today and do what you know you are supposed to do, okay? Love all you guys. I'm going to pray for you now before we get off. Father, I bless your holy name. I thank you for these listening right now. I plead the blood of Jesus, and I pray right now that you would touch them in every area. I pray as they submit to you. I pray, Holy Ghost, that you would work on them now. I pray, come Holy Spirit, right now. Touch them. I pray you fill them. I pray that you would, that spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge, I pray that the eyes of their understanding be enlightened. I pray that you would guide them. Let your word be a light unto their path and a lamp unto their feet. In Jesus' name, open their eyes that they may see wondrous things in your word. I thank you for helping them and strengthening them with the mercy and the grace of God to submit to you, Lord. I pray that they will submit and yield. I pray right now in Jesus' name. And I pray, God, that you would direct them in what to do, that they, when they do it, that they would be full of joy, overflowing, full of grace and mercy in Jesus' name. All right. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, everyone out there, bless you. Y'all be a be amazing and go do something awesome for people all right thank you for everything and we will talk to you